Hey guys, um, so I'm trying something different this time. I wasn't sure how this will be received, and you know, we are always trying to do new things in the way that we do our training. So we thought that instead of doing a typical tutorial where I show you, you know, in real time, which we have a lot of on the website and we've got lots of our live sessions, I thought this time we'll do something a bit more personal you know, discussing things that maybe we don't like to talk about as animators. Because, um, you know, everything is always fun and happy and joyful. We don't usually talk about the, the, the issues that we actually do worry about. And um, they're usually mentioned in passing, sometimes written in blogs, but I thought maybe we could do a video where, you know, I share some of my experience, what I've learned, during the years and see if that helps you. Um, if you end up liking these videos, I'll do more of them. But um, this is literally an experiment just to see how it goes. And you can watch, you can listen. Um, I'm sorry if this sounds a little bit like a meditation video. Um, I am a big fan of meditating, actually. And, you know, obviously my influences from the martial arts. A lot of it is carried through into Anim Dojo because um, there is a lot to learn from different perspectives on how the human body and mind work. So, you know, I am not ashamed of saying that, you know, I do believe that meditation and um, being honest with yourself is important for well-being and, you know, being happy. So, what I wanted to talk about actually in this video was my experience and my career, my view of it, and how it's sh shaped over the years, and how it's affected me, um, the different things that have happened, the, the different situations I found myself in, you know, my career goals, where I wanted to be, and where I ended up, you know, whether or not that's what I wanted, and I'm sure it's gonna be similar to your situation. If you're watching the video, this is where my Maya crashes. So, I end up losing everything. And I think that's one of the things that inspired me to talk about this video in this way, where, you know, you plan to do something, and then something out of nowhere comes and just changes everything for you and you you might think to, to yourself that you know oh I want to be this kind of animator or I want to do that I want to go work for this feature studio or that feature studio I want to work for that video game developer um, but at the end of the day there's only so much that you can control outside of your own skill set outside of what you're you know capable of doing and you can't control the market you can't control projects when they're starting, all you can do is just be ready for when the time is right, and if the time works for the studio, then, you know, that that's how it works. But, I'm not a, you know, overly religious person, I, I don't know, you know, what life is all about, but I do know that a lot of things happen and then you look back at it and it sort of makes sense. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that and how my experience made me change my perspective on things and allowed me to become a little bit happier and more com comfortable with my career, with my experience. And I know that a, lot of, a lot of you could probably relate to the frustrations of trying to make it, trying to become an animator, or if you are an animator you just started and, you know, you just feel inadequate or you're not good enough or people are way more talented than you you know you're surrounded by all these amazing show reels and you just feel constantly frustrated like you're never content with what you are capable of doing so if we go back more than 12 years you know I started out working at a bank that was my very first job and I didn't last too long um, it was about probably like less than a year, like 11 months, 10 months. 
And I've always wanted to be an animator, but I had given up by that point because, you know, I, I'm not originally from the UK and, you know, back then, um, growing up in the Middle East, we didn't have any animation schools. Um, there were no studios, so pretty much my entire, you know, dream was sort of just put in the uh, as a childhood dream that never is never going to take shape. And after I, uh, you know, uh, met my my now you know ex-wife, but we we moved to the UK, and um, I tried looking for work. Uh, as a stockbroker, which is what my, what my training was and what my previous job was, and there was this really horrible interview that I had where I had to go and do a sales pitch to someone, and I remember when I first opened the, when she opened the door, she was like, is this about religion? And I was like, what? And then I, was, I didn't even get a chance to reply, and then she just slammed the door in my face, and I knew at that point that there's no way I'm going to be doing this for my life, my whole like career, and I, I remember I just said to myself, um, no, I mean, I'm in, I'm not, you know, I'm in, I'm in London now. Let me, let me try and pursue my dream, and I did. I enrolled into some courses. Um, I couldn't afford to go and do an entire year's worth of, of university, but I did teach myself and, you know, did whatever I can. Read all the books, and I was lucky enough to then get a job to, you know, freelancing um, on a project for the BBC, and it was my very first job. I was super excited. But there was still something inside of me that was saying, this isn't enough. I want to go work for X and X and so and so. And I, I can't remember, you know, the exact thoughts I was having back then, but I was always, you know, thirsty and hungry for more. I, I was not satisfied. Um, wherever I was, I was constantly looking for that next big thing, that project, that skill, that... I don't know anything. Um, and then after that, I was lucky enough to go to Japan, where I met uh, one of the guys, which is going to be in our interview soon, uh, Earl Brawley, and uh, Oliver, uh, who uh, also played a big part in my career later on. But at the time, I didn't know that. Um, you know, we were animators, and, you know, again, I was not in. I, I didn't make the most of my time in Japan, I could have enjoyed, you know, everything that Japan had to offer and just enjoyed my time there. But no, I was just so, again, eager and desperate and just wanting to learn and to keep moving forward. And I was never satisfied with myself, never enjoying the moment. And all I wanted to do was just become a, a feature animator or, you know, work on those big projects that people see in the cinema and get my credit and all that. Um, after that, I came back to London and I, you know, freelanced for a uh, couple of years, um, worked on a few TV shows, and again, I was not satisfied. I kept wanting that next big thing. For a very long time, no matter how, you know, people kept telling me that, you know, oh, you're doing well, you're doing this, you're doing that. Personally, I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with my progress. I wanted that big thing because I kept comparing myself to all these other people out there and one of the the thing that really you know changed was when I got um, an email from Oliver who said oh Cartoon Network is opening up a training program in uh, Abu Dhabi would you like to come and I said uh, sure because at that point I was starting to get really um, frustrated with myself, with my career, and I just wanted something else. And I thought this would be a good change. And I spent a good two years over there, um, met some great people, and that's where I got my very first taste of what it's like to teach and to mentor students, work with studios, you know. And I saw that there is, there is something there that I'm quite passionate about. But again, I wasn't in the industry for a while, and I was worried, oh, now I'm going to stop becoming an animator, I'm going to lose my skills. How am I going to maintain the ability to teach and also be an animator at the same time? So it was a struggle and I started to start, you know, worry, I'm going to lose my skills. And then at that point we decided, okay, let's just go back to the UK. And that's when I was first introduced to Blue Zoo. Um, and I started working there as an animator, um, 
you know, I was, I had a pretty, you know, big job in Abu Dhabi, I was like getting paid well, and I went back again from scratch, sort of starting all over again, and that's where my ego took a big hit, and I struggled for a while, couldn't really cope with, you know, the fact that I was getting older, and, you know, here I am still working in TV, not really getting into that thing I wanted my whole life, which is to go, you know, work for Disney or whatever kind of big studio like that. And over time, I started to, cut, to, to think to myself, I know, it's the teaching. I love the teaching. So you can see there's a pattern. I keep going back and forth. I'm not really sure what I want to do with my life. I'm not really sure what I want to do with my career. And I'm not satisfied. I'm always comparing myself, always looking at what's out there and not what is in front of me. Until eventually, I decided to do my master's. And I thought, you know what, let's put the whole animation career behind. Let's just focus on becoming a lecturer. And that's where the master's came in. So I said, I'll become a lecturer. Um, let me do my PhD. And, you know, I was pretty con you know, confident I'm going to get into that. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get a job after that as a lecturer. It was very difficult, very competitive. And I was asked to come back to uh, work at Blue Zoo again. And then that's when something changed in me. All of a sudden, I started to think back at all the decisions I've made in my life and how every time I forced something to happen, I would think it's like happening because I forced it to happen, but when I really look back at it, it was all just chance. It was all moments where I met the right person at the right time that introduced me to the right situation, you know? And when I look back at it, it starts to make sense. So when I first started my, my, my career, um, I was just lucky enough that I was the only animator in my group and that the BBC was just looking for one animator. So it was just complete luck that I managed to get that role. And same thing with getting to work in Japan. It was just absolute luck that that studio at the time was hiring people from abroad regardless of their skills and experience. And where I met Oliver, again, that was chance. And him recommending me to work with him in Abu Dhabi was also chance. Um, now, before I left to Abu Dhabi, I met a group of people uh, at a studio I used to work at in the Midlands. And they're the ones who introduced me to Blue Zoo. So, every single thing I thought I was in control of turned out that it wasn't in my control. It was The only thing I had in my control was my skills. That's it. I couldn't control who I met. I couldn't control where those people ended up. And it was just a matter of being in the right place at the right time and just going with the flow. You know, if I, if, if I didn't go to Japan, I would never have met Oliver, I would never have gone to Abu Dhabi, I would never have learned about teaching, I would have never been interested in teaching, I would never have done my masters, I would probably not even be doing Anim Dojo at the moment. So, it's a strange thing. And that's where at that moment I realized that, you know what, just let it go, just see where this takes you. Why not for the very first time, just focus on being in the moment. Focus on being here right now at Blue Zoo and do your best and just enjoy it. Don't worry about the future, just let it be. And, you know, I never once asked to be promoted. I never once asked for a raise. I never once asked for anything. You know, I just let it be. And over time, I was given opportunities. The only thing that I did ask for was when I approached uh, Tom a few years ago and I said, you know, I have an idea. I can see that there's a gap in the market when it comes to training people and we can really make a difference here. So why don't we try it out? Let's just do a master class and see what happens. And then that's when we did our very first master class. And it would, you know, ever since then, things were just getting bigger and bigger and more important and you know we were getting so many chances and opportunities that for me looking back now I could never have planned this kind of career where I get the chance now to still be an animator still work within a studio and still teach and I know that there's a lot of places that provide that kind of training but 
to be actually capable of also putting together a curriculum I believe works and to have met the people I've met to be given the chances I've been given none of that would have happened if I were stubborn during my years here at Blue Zoo the fact that I just let it be the fact that I just let it go really just allowed my career to go where it needed to go I didn't pigeonhole myself I didn't think to myself well unless I work on X amount of films or I get to work with X and you know whatever director or studio then I'm a, I'm, I'm a nobody I just realized you know that we're all people we all are insecure about things we all you know don't admit it in public um, it's really difficult for us to do that especially if you're in this industry um, everything's about joking around and being funny and you know we're all we're all guilty of that you know we, we, we tend to sort of uh, make it look like everything is happy and fun all the time when in reality a lot of people that do work in the arts and the creative industries do suffer from you know depression anxiety social anxiety all kinds of different things and it's very hard sometimes to come out and talk about it but for me I think letting go and just being happy with where I am right now makes the biggest difference and I think you should do the same you know if you're still studying you know don't rush it enjoy it learn practice you know don't worry about getting the job don't worry about putting together something for your showreel just do your best to you know be the best you can be at that moment you know if you just started at a studio don't worry about building your reel again and you know oh I don't have enough time to get the best work so I can get the job that I want you know just enjoy it and you never know where you're gonna end up you know just let it be let it go and just you know be yourself you know be in that moment so I hope you like this video I really didn't script or plan it in the sense of what I was gonna say it's more about I wanted to try something completely different and see you know if you guys like this I'd really appreciate if you guys could you know like subscribe follow us um, and you know check out animdojo.com um, we are very different to what you might expect in terms of training and you know we're still fairly young you know working really hard uh, making sure that we can provide you know the best kind of training you know for the lowest price so yeah you know I'd love it if you guys could support us check us out and you know until next time I'd say uh, good luck and happy animating <laughs>